Okay, here we go. Headsets on. So if you're in a, a, a long time viewer of my, my channel, mostly on Twitch or whatever, you know that I, I, I've had a, a, I've always had mixed feelings about Train Sim World. But uh, I've always tried to make it a point to, at least for the most part, the major ones at least, ooh, excuse me, to play the, all the big players in the Train Sim community, or Train Sim game. Just that way, when I sit there and I say something about a, a, a particular game, whether it's good or bad, I'm not just talking out my ass. I'm speaking from experience. And so I've played, you know, Run 8, Trains, Train Simulator Classic, and every version of it before that. Train Sim World, I've even dabbled with Sim Rail, Open Rails, and obviously MSTS. Out of all of them, Train Sim World here has always been the one that's kind of irked me a little bit. On one hand, it has such great promise. Like, the game looks fantastic. But the gameplay is so bad <laughs> that it's just not been enjoyable for me. Uh, I'm not using a dynamic break. Um, now, for a while, a few months now, there has been a mod out. It's a, it's a general VR injector program for Unreal games. And you know, Train Sim World being an Unreal game, you can inject VR. They're injected into VR. And I don't know how this looks for you guys, but for me, this is an incredibly, massively immersive experience. So it's my hands. Go ahead and just apply the brakes. I am using my rail driver. Which I have muscle memory where every button and knob on that is. My hands are here, right? Right here. I can look and move. This is exactly what I want out of a VR experience in a train simulator. I can even lean my head forward. I gotta be careful with my microphone's foot right here. Lean my head forward. Oh, I look over there. oh I want I wanna look out and see what's behind me. I, can, I have full six degrees of freedom of motion, and I've got 3D depth, so I can lean this way, and it's like, this just feels like a native VR experience, and this is game-changing for me, because it's like, I don't like the gameplay of Train Sim World, but the fact that I can sit here in VR makes me want to, like, kind of go, ah, I hate the gameplay, but I love the VR. I have been dabbling, there's another VR injector called Vorpex that does work with pretty much any game. I have been dabbling with getting VR to work in Run 8, but it's a long ways off, and I need, I need support that I ain't gonna get to get that to work. But, and, and I am well aware of Derail Valley. If anyone gets in the comments and goes, oh, we're trying to take my money, I have. And again, it wasn't one that I was very fond of. But I think this is a great proof of concept that VR in a train simulator, of how, of how VR in a train simulator could work, right? You don't need full motion control or support, just six degrees of freedom to look around and you know move your head about and whatever. And then I could sit here and play with my rail driver. I could sit here and use my you know keyboard if I had the keyboard commands memorized. Hell, where is it? Oh, it's not on my table anymore. Railworks or Trade Sim World supports Xbox controllers. So you can see with an Xbox controller. And I would love to have that immersive experience where, like, I'm sitting here in VR, in this, or Run 8, or something multiplayer, and I'm just leaning my head out the window like this, and I'm looking down at somebody who's sitting up, like, my conductor sitting down there, and just talking to him, like, what's up, bro? Like, that would be super awesome. And then have, like, a push to talk button, and have the radio right there, so, like, Oh, he walks up to the cab, and we can just talk as if we're standing next to each other. He walks to the back of the train, and I hit the push-to-talk button on our radio, and now we're talking on walkie-talkies. Like, that would be really cool. Like, proximity voice chat? Come on. Come on, guys. Um, and I've, I've run a couple of trains so far. There's a few little bugs and glitches with this that I've been working out. 
But this is, again, this is like game, like, oh, like, I can even, I can even do this. Like, I can get up out of my seat, right? I gotta be careful because I'm in mean, my headset with a wall over here. If there's, all right, I got my hand on the wall, so I know where it's at. Like, I can walk over like this. Like, I can just walk around the camp with my little commode. How far can I walk? Can I, can I even, oh, this is a little game breaking, immersion breaking, but like, That's an advanced uh, VR user move. I would not recommend that if you are not used to playing in VR because that was very, very disorienting. Ugh! But I, I think I think a big step forward for, for any train simulator, running, trains, hell, train sim world, is potentially looking into VR. Now, when I say looking into VR support, I don't mean drop everything and, and focus 100% on VR support. Don't focus on it. Make it something that has to be, or VR has to be something that you have to use for the game. I still think that the, the pancake gaming or using flat screens is, is, is an important thing. And you shouldn't just, you know, you shouldn't be, let me rephrase this. If you are, If you are not a VR user, you don't have a VR headset, and you don't plan on getting one, you shouldn't think of VR development as stepping on your toes. You already have the game. The game works. It's fine. It's for you. Great. Implement VR, which is, is a big, is, that is admittedly a tall ask. That is a lot of work to implement VR. But once VR is implemented and working at this level, like, it's not something that really needs to continuously be developed. It gets to be worked on and improved, but if it's base working, then it works. And it's not going to be, you know, VR implementation isn't going to be something that's going to distract from the flat screen game players. They shouldn't be sitting there thinking, oh, you're going to implement VR, now I have to go out buy a VR set, I'm not going to be able to play the game. It's like, no, you'd still be able to play the game. It's just opening up an avenue for greater immersion for other players. And this is a funny argument I've seen a couple of times uh, on the Dovetail forums that VR is a very niche thing. So, if you go to Steam and you go to Stats and you go to Hardware Survey and you go down to VR and you click on that, it'll tell you the number of users per month in a percentage of the number of Steam users who are using VR. And for June, it was like 1.75%. And you're like, that's 1.75%, that's a super small amount of people, that's nobody. That's just over 500, it's like 550,000 people. 550,000 people just on Steam who are using a VR headset for the month of June. If you go to Steam stat or Steam charts and you type in every single train sim world, and you total up the 30-day average players and then round up, because I'm nice, it's about 2,000 people, which makes up 0.006% of the total number of people on Steam. So, what's a bigger number of users? 500,000 VR users or 2,000 train sim users? This is a bit of a stretch, but I do believe that if VR was to be implemented in a train simulator, it, it would be a significant spike in sales. But I do believe there would be a larger number of people interested in it because it's a new VR experience. You would be pulling in a lot of those VR users. I, I said this the other day when I was live streaming. Uh, something that uh, Flight Simulator did, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, it pulled in a lot more people into the flight sim community because oh, it's a new it's a new ex take on that experience, and it's giving them the ability to like visit their house, 
and because of that, it was a new interesting thing, a new experience. It pulled in a lot more people. People who'd never played flight simulators before. If you had a quality train simulator, run a trains, train sim world with native VR support, you'd probably pull in, you know, I'm not gonna say millions, but you'd probably pull in you know, a couple thousand players from the VR community who are just hardcore VR gamers. Who if a game doesn't have VR support, they look at it and go, nah. But like this is game changing. This is, oh, this is, mm, I'm like I'm so excited that this mod works as well as it does, and I'm frustrated looking at like Run Eight and Trains now. Like Run Eight's multiplayer is fantastic. Please well, give me this level of VR support in game. I would be oh I'd be so happy. Because honestly, like the gameplay in Transcend World has always been lackluster. And I think I think I'm gonna go ahead and hit this button because I can I can even I love that I can even toggle it off. Like I can toggle off VR mode. Oh, I didn't realize my camera was all out of focus. I set up my recording stuff and didn't get everything set up correctly. It's part of the reason why too I'm wearing a hoodie is because the shirt I'm wearing is like it's yellow. But even though it's yellow, it somehow throws off my, like, green screen. So I had to put a hoodie on. But yeah, um, if you're, you know, developers of train simulators, run A, train simulator, trains, please, like, Please? VR, yeah, please? And if, if you are... If you're a fan of these train simulators, you know, share this video. Say something positive about, you know, VR. Um, like, if you're a VR user, like, say something like, why, why do you think VR would be a, a good addition to a train simulator? And if you're a flat screen player who's against VR, like, what do you have to lose? If they implement VR, you you literally lose nothing. You gain, you actually gain, because if you if VR is, if VR support is implemented, now it's future proofed against you getting a VR headset. You may not have one now, but let's say five years down the road you get one, and oh wow, this game has had VR support for the last five years. <gasps> now you can play VR. Anywho, thanks for watching. I will catch you guys all later. Check the link in the description below for my live streams. I might actually be live streaming this in a couple of weeks. Um, I never had to turn my filters off. Whatever. I just, like I said again, I just like super quickly got this set up to uh, like quickly record this. So I'll catch you guys all in the next one.